we go. Episode five. Let's go! <laughs> I don't know why I screamed like that. That was real extra. That was real extra. Y'all see I got the fro out today. He's extra today. Beautiful people, what's going on? Let's go. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with this with this, this headset right now. Like, what do I what should I do? I'm just gonna let it land on the back like that. Yeah. What are we doing? It's giving <laughs> How I look. <laughs> Looks like Hit me with the side profile, Mario. What it look like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You're gorgeous, babe. I'm gorgeous. I'm gorgeous. That's crazy. Okay. I love this look though. I love your hair out. Do you? I do. Okay. I wore it up because you said that you liked it. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna commit. I was gonna put a put my uh, signature cap on, but signature cap? Yeah, you know, put a snap back on. Um, oh, that cat. And ride out that way, but you know. I got the fro out, guys, so that means that I'm acting real wild today. Are you? I don't, I don't know. It, it, it gives, it's giving wild look. It's it giving wild a, energy. We have a wild story to tell today. That Wow, look at the transition. We do. Wow, what are we talking about then, babe? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Like, think that, I mean, it's, I mean, the segue really should be like, you're sexy. Are we going to have any more babies? Listen now. <laughs> don't get me started now. Okay. Wait, time out. Something about your hair out, glasses. I mean, you did, you, you caught me when, with the long dreads. And now so you're telling hair, me to bring the dreads back? Is that what you just hair, said? The hair, it does something. Oh, it's the for hair. Me. It's just the hair in general. It does something for me. It's like it's like my Samson. Just give me that Samson strength or that Samson sexy. Ooh, <laughs> that Samson oh, I don't sexy. Think you should be using Hold that. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> That seems so wrong. That was a little that weird, seems but wrong. still, I mean, if it, it kind of flowed. Hey, yeah. I need to trademark that. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, so are we having more babies? That's what are, you want to know. Yeah, babe. Are we gonna have any more babies? I mean, everything still kind of works does over it? here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that we have to tell a story first because it's one of the reasons that made us decide whether or not we're going to have any more babies. And what story is that? And that is our beautiful baby boy's birth story. Okay. The golden boy. The golden boy. Mm -hmm. Our little one, Simeon. Um and it's a it's a it's an interesting story. Yeah. It's a it, it was a, it's, it was a journey. Let yes, me say that for sure. Um, one that we didn't really expect. Mm -mm. Um, no, but I mean we didn't expect any of it because I think we were like I, I was good after one baby, and you were like, no, she's gonna be weird. We need to have another baby. That is correct, and, and she's still was, weird. So <laughs> I guess the other kids didn't really help much. <laughs> so we had two, and then I was like, babe, I'm good. I'm good with two. We got this, and then you were like. I don't know. And then God was like, nope, you're going to have one more. God answered that for us. He did. He we was like, oh, you might not want one. You kind of want one. He's like, don't worry. Yeah. I got the final say. He didn't even give us a chance mm. to decide. Praise so, God. He's a good God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we ended up pregnant with Simi. I think Penn wasn't even a year old yet. They're only 19 months apart. But yeah. Um, yeah, but that, that was like so exciting when we were like, oh my gosh, a third baby. And then immediately turned to panic. Yeah. Because if you, I mean, Penelope was born in April. Simi was conceived in February. Mm -hmm. I know. Quick math. Oh, Come okay. on, baby. Yep. Step know. your game up. It's so that means blurry, that she was, you know? so that, that means that she was February. That means that she was 10 months old when we mm -hmm. started this journey of, Simeon yeah, um and it, it was it was very interesting because it's not something that we planned no. and when we found out that you were pregnant we were like okay uh we should probably start doing some doctor's appointments and you know making sure that everything is good in there because if you guys watched the previous uh podcast where well, i think it was a lot it was two podcasts ago um where we talked about penelope's birth story mm -hmm. there was a lot that took place that um had us on on our heels and yeah, so we have this thing called nait mm -hmm. yes. which happens only when matthew and i make babies it's super rare that didn't stop us um yeah but just like a recap if you didn't listen to that last episode basically it's like my body attacks the baby's platelets that he they get from matthew and so basically that means like they could bleed out because they have nothing to stop the blood so anyways really scary can't figure it out if you can't tell until the baby is born so we remember from when penelope was in the nicu when the doctors found out actually what it was that we had they were like oh and if you have any more babies you got to do xyz but we were like in, on cloud shock. nine i, mean, I think there's like a shock factor yeah, there's yeah there's like the shock factor we were not listening after they were like oh everything's good you can take her home we were just like all right zone out and so then i was like once we found out we were pregnant i was like all excited and then i'm like wait 
what did the hematologist tell us? And so I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know what to say, like what to look up, what to tell the doctors. So I'm going to my scheduled OB appointments and I'm telling them what happened and that I know I'm supposed to be doing something else. That's all I know. And they're like, they don't even know what it is. They don't even know what what NAIT was. Mm -hmm. They had no idea like what procedures they were supposed to do. And that was like weeks and weeks of me like asking them like, guys, I know there's something. So then they were like, okay, let's just send her to the um, perinatal specialist. So I went there and I'm thinking like, okay, good. I'm going to get a bunch of answers. But then she was like rude. She was mean. Well, we're going straight to that. But she was bold. Okay. So she told me everything. She's like, basically, you should have been doing this since day one. I think I was like 13 weeks or 14 weeks pregnant. And she's like, you should have been doing this from the moment you found out you're pregnant. You need to do all this stuff called IVIG therapy. You need to get on prednisone. You need to do da 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 da. And they're like, we don't know if this baby's gonna make it because he could bleed out. He could have a hemorrhage. Like she was just lo- unloading on me, and it was a lot to take in. So I remember calling you on my way home. I was just bawling my Sydney's eyes gonna out. Die. Well, we didn't actually didn't know. We didn't have a name for him we at this point. We yet. weren't sure. Yeah, we didn't know the gender, but she was yeah. like, this baby's going to die. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I, I was, was like, like <laughs> in tears and Matthew just like calm. He like, you know, calmed me down over the phone. He's like, it's okay. We're going to get through this. Like God didn't give us this baby for like no reason. We're like, we're going to go through this process. And so thus began the process. Yeah. And it, God works in some very mysterious ways. It's hilarious. Um, I mean, this story is not hilarious, but one of the big hurdles that we had is like, we knew that this is going to cost a lot of money. And we were like, listen, we need to talk to the insurance. The doctors they, actually told, they told us, they were us, like, yo, you yeah, guys they need can't to can't start until we ask yeah. if the insurance will cover this procedure because it's really expensive yeah. and it's really intense. So, we had to call our insurance and it took a couple of weeks actually to get their approval. Mm-hmm. That took a while. And so as soon as we were able to start, um, I found out how much it was. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and the funny the funny part about it that I was getting to is um, Dana was, she's yeah. working full time doing uh, social media content creation. Mm-hmm. And I was still working um, in insurance. So I still had, you know, the stable insurance company. You know, yeah, I had the benefits. Thank God for that. And it's so funny because... I almost left my job mm-hmm. to pursue another job, which is in ministry. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest uh, kind of back and forth that we had during that time was like, "Hey, like we, your your insurance is really good, it like, was top and we, I think you need to stay here. Or something." She just didn't agree. I was like so ready to get up and yeah, go. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm going into ministry. This is my calling. Thank you. G- How did you <laughs> like? I can't say no to God, baby. I gotta go. This is what He wants me to do. And we just weren't on the same page with that. You were like. <sighs> Something I don't. Just God just was not. I, I really wanted you to right. do that, but God was. I was like, so mad too during that time. I was like, "She's yeah. blocking my blessing right now." I was like, <laughs> "But that's this is another God's podcast plan for me." For yeah, sure. that's like, another. But but thankfully we did because the insurance that I had was really good, and, and they approved and they it. Approved it. <laughs> yes, they did. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I had to go in and do this um, every week while I was pregnant. I had to go into the hospital. And they had to give me an injection that kind of looked like an IV, but it's called IVIG therapy. And this bag, it was like this big, cost $80,000. And I had to get one of those every single week. And so, but the way they have to put it in me is they had to do it over a course of time. So I was there all day. I would get there at 7 a.m. And I wouldn't leave till sometimes I would leave like midnight. Like I would just be there literally all day while you have this liquid gold yeah. just dropping and into I was your veins in, yeah i was in the eighty thousand dollars <laughs> like, we're not just gonna roll through an eighty thousand dollar bag of of liquid yeah is like, what we're talking about like crazy. that's wild yeah and it was it was intense and almost every and the nurses got used to me they knew me as the Hi, IV, ivig girl so i'd come in they'd set me up but i had to do it in the labor and delivery rooms so if there was like a lot of like moms delivering that day, then sometimes I had to like sit like on a, um, in the triage and then I'm like not even comfortable, but I'm sitting on this like plastic paper the whole day. And so it was pretty intense. And I just felt like it was, it was crazy. I just had to block off an entire day to just be there and like lay out and my veins suck. So like they would be poke me at least three times before they could get it. So it really looked like I just like had 
done drugs like <sighs> that whole time because I had holes all over my arms mm. from them trying to find veins. And then I would be gone all day. So I felt like, like, how did you feel during that? Like you were Mr. Mom. I mean, it was, it was it was once yeah. a week. And I'm OK. So Penelope was at this point, she probably was about a, about a year and a half. Um, while you're going through this whole procedure. Um, and it was just like, it was a lot to balance just because, you know, that separation anxiety for a child at that age. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, where's mommy? She's been gone all day. Mommy's been breastfeeding. So she's used to the boob. Daddy, you ain't got the boobs that mommy got. Your <laughs> boobs are a little different. They're not producing what mommy's <laughs> boobs are producing. So They're still luscious. Help me. Help me. I mean, come on now. I, I, don't miss, I don't miss bench day. I'm going to tell you that much. Um, but it's like, it was kind of hard to balance that and then just the emotions of it. Um, and I think I was more emotional just because it was like, dang, you are sacrificing your time, your energy, like your emotions. There's a lot that you're putting on the line for this mm -hmm. child. So like, it was easy for me to take care of the kids. Cause I'm like, I'd rather take care of the kids in this situation than have to, you know, be laid up with, you know, IVs in my arm. Like that's way more of a sacrifice at this point. So, um, I, I, I was, I was more emotional and, and I was feeling for you more than I was like feeling for myself because I like, there's no mm. pity party over here, you know, like, so <laughs> it's like, it, it was just so amazing seeing you go through that and seeing you be as strong as you were through the process. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like a blur because I really like going through all of that and being gone. And then because it was a high risk pregnancy at that point, I was going to, um, to see the doctor twice a week. So I'm also going to doctor's appointments and our our doctor's office is like almost is like 45 minutes away. So I'm gone like three times a week and a full day once a week. So it was it was a lot, but I felt like it was all a blur because I was like doing whatever it took for the baby. You know, I yeah. wanted to just sacrifice and do whatever I could. And then um I think what we went through with Penelope kind of gave me peace. Mm -hmm. to handle what we're going through with Simi. So I felt like I didn't really have the same kind of anxiety and fear that I did with um, Penelope. And it's because God prepared us from that season to enter into this season. So even though it was a lot that we were going through, it didn't really feel like that. Can I ask you a question? Me. So I know that you said you, you had a feeling of peace, but like, what were you... What were you doing during this time frame where you're sitting strapped up to <laughs> IV for, what, 10, 11 hours? I don't know. Like, you were there for a long period of time. So, like, yeah. what were you doing? And, like, how, how were you truly feeling, like, during this entire process? Because it was, it was a 30, how many weeks were you in there? Doing this every single, mm -hmm. at I least was, once a it week? It was, like, I think it was, like, 20-something weeks mm -hmm. um, because they had to deliver him early. But, um <clears throat> Yeah, so first of all, I did watch a lot of Grey's Anatomy. Well, that's not, I don't think that's the right show to watch while <laughs> Guil you're in the Guilty hospital. Is but it? it did prepare me because I didn't have a C section before, and seeing them in the OR prepared me for my C section. But I, yeah, so I, w I did a lot of um, like meditation devotions, I was in the Word a lot. Um, I would do any kind of editing or work that I could on my laptop, but most of the time I, could, I only had one hand mm. because my veins are terrible. So like I would, sometimes they'd have to hook it to my hand and if I moved, it'd come out and then they have to start all over again. Or if I had my arm here and I'd close it a little bit to bend, it would block it off and then it would start beeping and then the nurse would have to come in. And I, w I wanted to be as like, as easy as possible because I'm like taking up a whole bed and these nurses are like, you know, tending to all these like women in pain and, and having babies. So I wanted to just be like invisible. So I try not to do much, but I'm most of the time I'm like doing work with one hand or watching shows and reading. So it was awesome to be able to rest, but it was really uncomfortable at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So okay. like I didn't have to parent and chase little kids around while I was pregnant for one day of the week, which was like, it was kind of nice. <laughs> so you kind of walked into the hospital with like a smile on your face. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I had to like pack my lunches. <laughs> well, in the mm -hmm. beginning I packed like breakfast because I thought it was just going to be a couple hours and they're like, oh no, you're going to be here all, all day. And like, and some of the nurses were just like, oh my gosh, you're still here. Like, <laughs> and so, um, I made friends with all the nurses. And so sometimes they would like grab me food from the hospital and bring it in to me, but I usually had to like pack food and snacks for the whole day. And so, so, yo, shout out to the nurses over at St. Mary's, I know, man. Y'all held it down. Yeah, I love, thank you guys. I love you took care hospital. of my baby while she was in there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, like fast forward, I don't yeah. know, 20 something weeks. Um, they told me that we needed to do a C-section because, um, if I were to push him out 
and he does have low platelets, then something could happen. Like he could have a brain hemorrhage, he could bleed out or something could happen really detrimental. But, um, and the thing that we had to watch out for is that with this condition, with the NAIT, it gets worse with each baby. So I could be doing all of this therapy and taking all the, the this medicine and it could potentially be doing nothing. Mm. And so um, they don't really know until the baby comes out. So this whole time we're thinking like, praying that it's working, like praying that all, all of it's working. So we ended up having a scheduled C-section, which was also super crazy. Like, that was <laughs> probably one of the wildest things I've ever seen in my life. Because, yo, so if, if for those who have never been in the room while C-section has taken place, they have Dana's body laying down on this table. They have a huge, like, sheet. Uh, sheet tarp whatever you want to call it that's stop that's pretty much like from her chest down for the rest of her body her head is on the other side and i'm sitting on the other side with her but i could still see on the other side of the sheet right <laughs> so these doctors are going in you know they're doing the procedure and she's just looking at me with a smile on her face like <laughs> like my be- my whole like, in- insides are I was just like, like she's so happy out. look at her and then i look on the other side and literally they're holding like <laughs> They're holding her belly. Like, it's already cut open. They're, it's like just like a piece of paper. Like, they're doing one of these. They had a vacuum going. Oh I'm like, gosh. what is happening? And she's just on the other side like this. I'm like, yo, your body is cut open. I got a video of it. I'm going to show you all right now. Stop it. No, it's so funny because the doctor yes. was like, no video, sir. And he's like, okay. I'm like, like, no, y'all got me messed up. up. I, gotta, I need some proof because <laughs> this is crazy but oh yo, yeah gosh. seeing seeing that i was like man i know you were drugged up but i'm like yo you're strong and that whole recovery <laughs> process was crazy too yeah. because there were, we didn't have a c-section with the first two kids and i felt like it was a lot it was a lot easier um for you to recover and just watching you recover was like no big deal but like this one oh my gosh man Bruh. like i was like yo lord jesus please bring us some 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 help and support because <laughs> like the, i guess there was gas building up in her body and she, it was just hard for her to move and it was just it was a tough process seeing yeah. you go through that so it was rough you did, you did great babe i'm proud yeah, of you thanks babe so then uh simi was born and uh <laughs> he came out he point? came out mm-hmm. with low platelets yeah. still mm-hmm. so i can't imagine if we had done nothing um he came out with 21,000 and for reference, your average is like 150,000 to um, 100 or 400,000 platelets. So Penelope came out with 11,000. He came out with 21,000. So I do think the IVIG thing helped, but because my antibodies get stronger and stronger with each baby, that it just gets worse. So to, it was pretty scary to think that he came out with such low platelets even after everything that we did. Yeah. And I think I was, I mean, like you said, Penelope kind of prepared us for this. So when, when we got that news, I still, and I don't know how you feel, I guess you can talk about that, but um, I still had a feeling of peace. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was kind of like, yo, we've been here before. Uh, God has delivered us before. So I know that he, he was with us then and he's going to be with us now. You know, same God then, same God now. Yeah. So I had that feeling of peace within me that was just like, yo, no matter what happens, like I, we know that we're going to make it through. And when we got the news of the platelets level still being low, yeah, you know, and I was like, all right, you know, just work. another 11 days in the, in the, in the NICU, <laughs> but actually, just like Penelope, I'm prepared for it. I'm ready. Yeah. So, you know, like, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which was nice because we went in knowing like, okay, cool. Like they're going to go in. We literally were sitting in that same NICU a year before. Mm-hmm. Penn was born in 2020. Simi was born in 2021. So we're going down there and they're like, I we wasted remember no time. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember you guys. So anyways, we're down there and he was only in the NICU for three days because they knew exactly what mm. it was. Praise God. And I was able to, again, donate my platelets to boost his numbers back up. And it was all just God's hands on that. And um, he came home with us and that was a beautiful thing. So we still had to do like a handful of hematologist appointments Mm -hmm. afterwards, which cost a lot of money and everything. So Mm. Simi ended up being, I think we added everything up and it was just over $2 million. Hallelujah. (laughs) Yo, thank God for insurance. $2 million. (laughs) That's, yo, I I was like, man, this boy better be the next Barry Bonds. Maybe not Barry Bonds. (laughs) That's probably not a good one. Please don't take any steroids, Simi. Uh, But I was like, (laughs) listen, I need something from you, Simi. You better make make a life for you. I know God has a plan for you. Let me say that because $2 million. I know. 
Yeah. So crazy. crazy. So, and crazy. to think that like mm. we that would happen, like it would be like that, but times like a thousand. So they would probably have to double my IVIG. And mm. essentially what that IVIG therapy did was it like suppressed my immune system. It suppressed everything so that my body wouldn't attack um, the baby's platelets or it would try not to. So my body was like like severely weakened during that whole process. And so I had a lot of recovery to do. Um, I don't know if anyone's into this, but I encapsulated my placenta. from. Nobody's birth. into that, babe. <laughs> Nobody is into that. Some people are into it. Okay, what did you do after okay, you encapsulated? So they take your placenta and then they make it into, they dry it out and they make it into pills. And I think that helped me dramatically with like, the fact that I knew that this was potentially my last baby, uh, that I was jumping uh, off of pre prednisone. Uh, First of all, he doesn't know this, but I snuck it into his dinner uh, one time. <laughs> no wonder I got sick that day. Uh. <laughs> You're terrible. It's beautiful. It's beautiful too. But anyway, no man wants to eat a placenta. I mean, no, it's there's full no. Of I mean, I, I don't care how much nutrients this is in. And I, I'd rather be malnutrition. What is it? Malnu? Malnu? Malnourished. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. But anyway, so all that to say, that was a lot. So the question um, was to start this podcast. So are we having any more babies? That's the question. <laughs> we are not having any more babies. And why is that? Because that was a lot. And I made this man get a vasectomy. Actually, like, that's a very aggressive. <laughs> that's very aggressive. You didn't make me do anything. Right. He, You so graciously okay. volunteered to get the vasectomy, even though he was so dramatic. It was almost not worth it. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, listen, you had a C-section. It technically would have made more sense and been easier for them yeah. to just like, hey, we're already in here. Let's just tie a knot. But now I got to go in there and do the whole thing where I got to lay up on the desk to tape it to my belly and like uh, they got to do the burning oh of the, you know, but th there was a lot going on there's down there. A, there's a lot going on with your hormones and your, your mental everything like because... One, I knew we were going to go through this process with the, like, the platelet thing. We didn't know if he was going to be healthy. We needed to um, come to grips with this could potentially be our last baby. That makes you sad. And when you're on hormones, you know, you can get really sad. So I just didn't want that fin final thing to be like final for me, you know. Oh, but you wanted to be final for me. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So if you if you ever come home talking about some I'm pregnant, I'm like <laughs> that is not my baby. First of all, I've had oh. I have a lot of people say that they've had babies. I don't know who these lot of people are, but um, listen, we've been doing a lot of practicing over here, if, and there hasn't been any baby that, that if, that's come our way yet. If so if you, if happens. you if it happens. <laughs> if it this happens. is not a Mary and Joseph story, okay? <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no sweet baby Jesus in there, because that is not my baby. <laughs> if it did happen, but no, it would be. Would, yo, honestly, I feel like I, I don't know why. And something in my belly is telling me, like, yeah, you know, I think we're gonna have another kid. I don't what? know why. Stop Listen, it. I don't know why. Why it's, be, it's being documented? Serious? I don't know why, bro. But I'm like, yo, if it happens, God's plan. Like, I would love to have another kid, but you know, under the circumstances. And we did. I did. They did tell us that. You having another baby not only could affect our child, you know, with have health risk, but you could have health risk as well. Mm, yeah. So it's like, you know, it just definitely, you know, it, it wasn't worth it for me. So, you mm -hmm. know, I took that, made that decision to go ahead and, yeah. and get the snip snip. And fellas, it's not as bad <laughs> as you may think it is. I don't know why people make it sound like they're going to cut the whole thing off. Like you still, <laughs> it's still there. Okay. It still works. It functions. Everything is good. You know what I'm saying? You, you, the, the swimmers just, they kind of just backstroke instead of, mm. you know, breaststroke. So yeah. like, just, just relax. Everything is good. Like yeah. it, it, I would, I def highly recommend the, the guys do it over the girls. It's a lot easier procedure. Yeah, for it sure. is. It is. Sure. And I'm sorry if your wife is gets gets on your neck about this. I apologize, guys. <laughs> it's my fault. Tell them to call he me. Did, he, it was like a domino, <laughs> a domino effect after he got one. Then all the uh, wives in yeah. our friend group made him get one too. There's like three of the homies that husbands, went and got yeah. it too. So yeah, we in this together. I mean, I'm a besides, start of a vasectomy club. I will say though, besides that story, I did have like a very overwhelming guilt. Why I didn't want to have any more babies was because I feel like I didn't want to share my time with so many kids. I felt like I didn't have enough time for even just my two. And now I got to share with three. And so it was really tough for me to just be like, oh, yeah, let's have more babies. But then they got to share me like five different ways. You know, I, that just that made me really sad. And I didn't want to do that. I want to be able to give them 
my all and just have energy for them and and so it was yeah that was that was a big thing and I don't I don't really know many people that have that same guilt because I feel like most people just want like all the babies but I just felt like I had so much time with Pia because like she we she had us for three years without any interference of siblings and then we had Penn and I feel like I I didn't get to give her as much time as I got to give Pia and then same with Simi so I just feel like I just I just didn't want to have to split my time up so much you know yeah but now like Simi's grown and like do you like ever think about like man it, look this is really over like I wish I could have one more like does that thought process ever take place or I just... mean when you look as good as you do sometimes I'm like I can get a baby but <laughs> and maybe this one will look like you I don't know well on that note let's wrap this thing up and let's see if we can give number four a try no. <laughs> Oh my god. But no, I, I, I do understand that. Um, you know, as far as having that mom guilt or parent guilt just in general. Um, because you do want to make sure that every kid gets their ample time of, you know, love and affection and you really get to like put that time and effort into them. Yeah. Uh but at the same time I'm like, hey, listen, God made us to reproduce, you know, so <laughs> we reproduced enough. I, li- think. I mean, you know, we could at least have a little basketball team. Two more just so yeah. that we could run, you know, a five on five if we needed to. Listen, you got three nephews down the street, so okay, we'll I put guess. those together. But I, I think we're done I here. Guess that works. Okay. Yeah, we're done here. So you got some words of wisdom <laughs> for the people, what you got? <laughs> Um, during this whole season, I had, um, written this down, like, I don't know how long ago, right? I think it was right before I was about to walk into the perinatal specialist. I read this verse, Acts twenty thirty five. In all things, I gave you an example that so laboring, you ought to help the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So I felt like this story and this testimony needed to be shared. And God did that for a reason. I love that. I love you. Oh, I love you too, baby. <laughs> Let's go. We'll wrap it up on that. Okay. Yeah. You hungry? We should put in an order for something. What are we yeah, eating, Mario? Definitely. What you want? You want some Mexican? <laughs> Mexican sounds <laughs> <Saturday>. great. <laughs> All right. Love y'all, baby. Bye. Peace and love. God bless. Bye.